Welcome to this video series where we are going to go through an IT or information technology prac exam paper one for grade 11 and this is from November 2024 and this is going to be question one. Question one tends to deal with grade 10 work particularly so let's get stuck into it. So here we have our scenario. We are an IT systems manager for Santa Claus. I don't know if you know who Santa Claus is. He runs a toy manufacturing distribution center at the North Pole. You've been asked by Santa to modify the current software that manages and provides information on toy production, reindeer management, and delivery details. It's going to be a Santa or Christmas themed exam paper. So let's get stuck into question one. It's going to be 25 marks in total. So let's get into it. Let's practice our grade 10 work particularly. The first question, very easy, 1.1, we're just going to be modifying some components. So it says on the Q11 button, modify the following. So we're going to be doing changes to that panel, changing the color to green, the font to red and making it bold, aligning the text to the center, and then we're going to disable that button. I've got the data files already open over here. There you can see the Q11 button. We're going to double click on that. And I'm assuming we're going to be dealing with that panel there with PNL Q11. So we're going to double click on it and let's Go look at those questions again. First of all, we want to change the color of the panel to green. So we're going to go take that panel, Q11, dot the color, not the brush color, the color is going to equal to, and it's not green, it's CL green. Remember, colors have CL in front of it as a predefined code in Delphi. We're going to change the font of the panel to red and it must be bold. Now the bold one is quite a tricky one. We're going to get to that now, but let's just do the red one. That's easier. So we're going to first of all go panel Q11 dot font property dot color. So that color must be, what did they say? It must be red, red and green. That seems like very Christmassy colors. So CL red and now the font is very tricky. Now if you ever get in a situation where you don't know how to do a particular component's uh, properties, for example if we do panel q1 dot font dot style. Now a lot of people go and they look over here and they go okay look here if I click on that panel and I come over here to the font there's the font let's break drag it down a bit let's go see all the options there's style and there you can see fs bold is the code for bold now a lot of people are tempted to just go this equals to fs bold and then you get the following problem it, it's an error it doesn't like that if i run it you'll see there'll be an error over there because if i actually go here and i select a bold i want you to notice what the style looks like it's got a square bracket around it if i select italic as well it puts all of them there with a comma separated by them so the correct answer for this is not fs bold but fs bold in square brackets if they wanted it underlined, then we would say comma fs underline and all the other properties that it can be. So it must be in square brackets for the bold property. So that's that one done. And then we must make sure that the text is in the center. Now that's something you might not be familiar with. The text, that's normally alignment. So let's go look. There's alignment and it's TA and we want it to the center. So you'll, if we look there, we want it to be TA center. So the alignment of the panel. So we can go panel Q11 dot alignment is equal to TA center. And then the last property, which is quite easy, is the button must not be able to be clicked on a second time. Disable the button. Now there's no disable property. BTN Q11, there's an enable property and we're just going to set that to false. So there we go. Let's run and test. So when we click on the button, it's gone green, the text is in red, it looks bold, it's in the center, and this button can't be clicked on anymore. So there we go. I think that is done. Question 1.1. Move on to question 1.2. Complete the code for BTNQ2 that takes as input the user's name via the ETG name control, the year they were born via a spin in it, and the present that they want via an ETG present edit control. And we're going to create this letter in the rich edit control. So they say these two parts have been done for us. So we're going to have to do all of this part over here. So we're going to start off with my name is and the name of the user. So I'm going to come here. Let's go to that button. There's all the inputs. We're going to double click on this. And we first of all need to get the input. So I'm going to first of all create a name of type string. Remember, don't call your variables name, just give it S name or something. Might conflict with Delphi at a later stage. I also want to get to the present that they want. So I'm going to make another variable now called S present. And we're going to need to get the year that they were born. And there's already an age variable. So I'm going to make an R year variable, which is going to be the year that they were born. That's also going to be an integer. So let's get the inputs first. So we're first going to get the name. 
which we're going to get from edt name dot txt so that's the name so to get the name once we have the name we're going to say my name is in the rich edit so over here let's go rich edit letter dot lines dot add and we're going to add in that text my name is and the name of the user my name is remember that must be in single quotes make sure we've got a space after the is and we're going to enter the name you could have actually just put the straightforward the edt name dot text there that would have also been fine okay so we've got the first line there's no punctuation at the end of that so there should probably be one but there's none then it's got I am how many years old now to work out the years old I said the age of the user's character is different to the current year and the year the user was born so the current year okay so please take note this paper is from 2024 if I use the current year I'm assuming this paper used the current year of 2024 I'm in 2025 so therefore we are going to probably get a nine instead of eight but ours will be correct because we must use the current year so let's go try that we're going to go and say we need to first of all get the year so i'm going to say the year is getting its value from the spin edit year dot value we don't need to convert it because that's integer to integer and we're going to work out the age the age equals to the current year 2025 minus the year they were born however they said current year they didn't say 2025 so it must always where which whenever we open this program it must always refer to the current year which means we need to get today's year so to do that i'm going to use the date function which says that will get the current date but i don't want the all three numbers i just want that part of the number which means i want to get the year of that so year of the date and that will return 2025 or 2024 if it was done last year and a lot of that is because we have access to the date utils functions over here so that's why we can use here of which is quite useful so that's the age so now i can do that line which says i am so many years old this year so let's do that we're gonna do that as the next one it'll be easy just to just copy this and then we can just paste it so now we can say i am and now we're going to put the age variable and then we're going to add the text years old this year so that's what they wanted however our age is not a string this all needs to be a string that's a string that's a string this needs to be converted from an int to a string oh, i haven't actually closed that properly i should close it over there there we go that's a bit better there we go okay close it over there we go so that looks a little bit better take away that plus sign there we go that looks a lot better so there we go the next one says please may i have and you just got to put the present that they requested this year so that's a simple text that's quite easy type in the exact same things i'm just going to copy this it makes my life a bit easier and i'm going to write that text quickly so i went and typed it all out in advance so we want to get the present now again we could put the present in the variable or you if you want to because we're not changing it we could literally go and say we get it from that edit control edt present so we can literally go edt present dot text and then it will display it like that so let's run it and see what it looks like remember they said that that part or that part and that part has been done for us so if i run it we've got that i'm going to say if i truck over here and there we go okay so there's a couple things that are incorrect so let's see if we can fix that first of all we need some sort of space between the heading and the thank you and i think our nine needs a little space after and the truck this year also needs a space off so we just need a couple of spaces over this there that needs a space and that needs a space and we need to actually put a blank line over here you could use hash 13 we can also just put in a blank line like that and we're going to put one over here as well let's try it again and we're going to say fire truck again and there we go if i scroll up you can see that it is a lot better it just doesn't fit because of the text but there we go it all fits in nicely and it's all laid out correctly so there we go i think that one is done and then let's move on to what looks like the last question and that's 3.1 mrs claus needs to make numerous christmas cakes for december and it's, she says a batch of christmas cakes takes 175 grams of flour which is stored in a constant so if i scroll down here there we go there is the constant for this question we must take his input so they actually give me the couple of steps so let's take a step i said take his input the value of the amount of flour used measured in kilograms via edt flour if we look there there's the flour we're going to when we click on this we're going to get the amount of flour we're going to get from edt t flower dot text but remember this is a string and this is real so it's converted from what it is a string to real but there's no string to real string to float 
so that we can get our input correct. So that's the input done. Check that the input is valid, a real number. If the input is not valid, then suitable message. Okay, so that changes things a bit. I think I've done too much now. I should have read that before. Because check if the input is valid. The best way to do that is actually to use the val. So I'm actually going to rewrite this code using the val procedure. So we're going to say, take all of that out. We're going to say val takes in the string and that's the string that we want and then we're going to give it the r flower as what it must convert that string into that real number and then we need a little code some sort of value that's going to tell us if it went properly or not so i'm going to use an n i'll type integer and we're going to put an n there so what happens is it converts this string into that number whether it's real or integer and if it's all fine that will be a zero if it's not a zero then something went wrong there and that allows me to do some error checking if it's not valid then a pseudo message must be displayed so i can go here and go okay that's fine if n is not a naught or if n is greater than naught, that would also work then there was a problem then we can say show message please enter a valid number else if it's not that so we're going to take that away and we say else we must do this and this part here is when the flower is a valid number so if it's a valid number then what do we want to do then we need to do the following if the input's valid then the total number of christmas cake batches that must be baked with the input must be calculated so the input is in kilograms flowers are made in batches of grams or the flower for batches in grams so we need to convert our amount that we've got into grams because we're comparing it with the constant for that so we actually need to take that 5.5 or in this case we're going to take that R flower and multiply it by a thousand. That's going to make it into grams. That's the kilograms converted into grams. Because remember, it takes in that much in kilograms. So 5.5 kilograms is about 5,500 grams. So that's how much flour we've got. That's how much grams it takes to make one cake. So we're going to take this amount, the whole of it. So we must put it in brackets. And we're going to divide it by the flour per batch constant. The issue is we are not, if we look, I think if we look here, we're not going to make half a cake or whatever. We are going to have the exact amount of cake. So the other itself, for example, if the user gives 5.5, then six cakes can be done. Ignore the leftover flour. We must ignore the remainder. So actually, we're not going to use that. We're going to use div. How many times does that value go into all of my kilograms of flour? And let's store that in the number of cakes. Let's call it our cakes. So our cakes is going to equal to flour in grams converted and we can see how many times flour per batch can go into that did i spell that correctly it's not per batch it's for batch so that should work there but i think we might have an issue here because that is a real number and div can't use i think that's the issue there it's not applicable oper div can't use real numbers so i need to convert this 5500 technically a real number into some sort of integer value and so you can round it i don't want to change this but use trunk trunk will convert this number into a integer that will then be allowed to work with div so that's a little tricky thing there if we want to use div or we could have just done the divide or just use trunk then to get rid of whatever's behind after that we could have used that as well there are lots of ways of doing it so that's going to tell us how many cakes we've got so now we can come here and we are going to say total batch of Christmas cakes equals that. So we're going to put that text. We'll come to this part now. Let's just say total batch of Christmas cakes. The red shelves are lines. And let's add the text. And then we're going to add the number of cakes variable there at the end. Now just remember that our cakes is an integer. We need to convert that from an int to a string so that that string can fit into the rich edit. So let's just run it and see that we get the right results. So we do get the six, that's great, but now we need to do this little part here. So once the total number of cakes has been calculated, then the text cake must be displayed for each batch that can be produced. So we want to say cake, 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 cake. So however many cakes there are is how many times we must display the word cake. So we're going to construct a string. It actually tells me there and add the text cake on in a loop. So there's a little hint there, which makes it a little bit easier. So if I come here, we're going to loop. So I'm going to make an R variable because I know how many times I'm going to do the loop. I'm going to do it that many times because that's how many the words cake I need to add. So I'm going to loop from R equal one to R cakes. And what are we going to do? We're going to create some sort of string. So we're going to call it S line of type string. 
and we're going to take S line, take whatever's in S line and add on the word, probably a space and then the text cake. Remembering to put in our quotes. There we go. And we want a little thing at the end there, like that. There we go. So I think that's what they want. They want cake, 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 cake. There we go. So we can take S line, take whatever's in there, and add on another cake for one. And then for two, add on another cake. But we must give it a starting value. What are we going to start with? We're going to start with the text quote, quote. So that it's like the null string. So it's got nothing in it, but the first time we're going to take cake, add it on. Now loop a second time. Add cake, add it on. Add cake, add it on. Make sure that there's a space there. And we do that six times. And once that's done, before we display this part, we're going to display S line. So that it displays all the word cake as many times as it needs to. So let's try that quickly. Let's run it. Display. There. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six of them. And then you've got total number of crystal cakes, six. So there we go. I think that is done. I think that's all of it done. So there we go. I think we've got all the points. That is question one. One last way to start the exam. Get nice and easy. We can now move on to the next question. Remember, if you want more help with Grade 11 RT, make sure that you subscribe to at Mr. Long RT and Cat on YouTube, as well as on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. We also have a channel for theory at Mr. Long Computer Terms. We can help you with your exams. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.